One of the most common questions I always see in almost any video that I post on YouTube is people asking me about different elements of my UI. So I figured the best thing I could do is give you guys an update. I've done videos like this in the past talking about my UI, why it is the way that it is, or giving you kind of like the breakdown of, well, my user interface. But in this video, I'm going to do an update because there have been changes since my last video that I did back in Dragonflight. So let's just dive into it. I think starting off, I want to talk about shadowed unit frames, which are my party frame add-ons or party frame setup. So I use shadowed unit frames. This is a add-on you can get from CurseForge. I'm also gonna have it linked in my Discord so you can always find it there. In my Discord as well is the import for my setup specifically. Now I will say this, it is set up really only for five man content. So if you also are looking to get like a raid setup or maybe you want more in five man dungeons, you might have to do some tweaking yourself. But the way that I have it set up is pretty much privy to how I want my game looking. I really like the kind of the clean texture that my thing has. And uh, yeah. Now next to my party frames, you're going to see all these little icons and it's actually tracking basically what my party has. So it's tracking offensives, it's tracking defensives, and it's tracking racials. This is called Omni CD. Similar to Shadowed Uniframes, this is going to be located in my Discord server for my import specifically. But if you get just Omni CD base, it does track a lot of kind of the important stuff for each class but you may want to go in and tweak it depending on what you may need. Now, I really like this because it lets me know what polls are going to be viable at what time. And while, you know, my group generally has a planned route and people have planned defensives and offensives, sometimes it's nice knowing, especially in pugs, where it's like, okay, I want to go into this dangerous pack, but we don't have any offensive CDs. So maybe I should maybe, uh, you know, pull a different pack for just a time being, or maybe I should slow the slow this next pull down by instead of pulling all three packs, maybe I'll pull two and chain the third one in. Omni CD allows you to have that decision making process during the key because you have the data that's being presented to you, or I guess information that's being presented to you. Now what I've done though is I've split out group cooldowns, AOE CC, and kicks. Because I like to see these all in different places and basically categorized. So next to or I guess above above my party frames, you're going to see group cooldown. So in this case, in, in this video in particular, we have the shout, the rallying cry from our warrior, and we have our uh, totems from our shaman. I'm also tracking things like darkness up here as well, devotion aura, basically healer cooldowns or group cooldowns that are going to help our group live. And this allows our healer and myself to call for things if we need it. Just to the lower right of uh, my party frames, you're also going to see AoE CCs and AoE stops. So this is things like Cap Totem, Shockwave, Link Sweep, Typhoon. All of these things allow me to maybe make calls on what we may need for a certain pull. Because if we need a kind of chain of stops, we know that we can go Link Sweep into Shockwave into Cap. Then it's DR'd, so then we're going to need like Roar into Typhoon, maybe with an Ursal's Vortex, like kind of Grip. These things can be called out and uh, made audible during a key. And lastly, we do have our kicks categorized. This helps me with a kick order. I generally will just read down the list. So like in this case, if chicken has his kick available, he might be first. And as kicks get used, it shifts it down to the bottom and the next kick gets brought up to the top. So I know I can pretty much call out an order of the top name just to call out in kicks. Now, of course, when you're in a pug group or you're not in comms, it's a little bit more difficult, but now you know you're being targeted by a spell, you look down and you don't see any kicks available, so you know it's not going to get stopped, so what you do is you pop a defensive. So all of this is set up through Omni CD. Super useful add-on, once again my import is going to be located in my Discord, uh, and I will have the link to the add-on down below. Next you're going to notice next to my party frames is you're going to see the spirit link totem kind of icon, and you're also going to see the evasion. This is an add-on called Big Debuffs. It allows you to basically track not only uh, icons and debuffs that are on your target, but also defensive buffs. It's pretty lightweight. I think if you import the base one with my shadow frame unit, it's not going to like line up. You're going to have to probably play around with where it's positioned, but I also have my import located in my discord for anyone who is interested. Really quick, while we're still clearing trash, I'll talk about some kind of tertiary stuff that isn't super important to the UI. And then once I get to a boss, I'll talk about some other stuff that I get a ton of questions about. So first things first, I'm using bartender. This is going to be basically all of my action bars. I have them located at the bottom of my screen. I never look down here uh, unless I'm like not in combat. That's why you're going to see that they have a little bit of like a faded alpha. They're faded to 50%, so they're somewhat see-through. It's because 
ideally, and this is goes into like the psychology of a good UI, you should not be looking at the bottom of your screen when playing this game. You should be looking generally towards the center of your screen. And that's kind of why I have my center resource hub available. So my action bars are located on there. If you're wondering which add-on I use, it's Bartender. Unfortunately, Bartender does not allow you to export profiles. It's very easy to set up. And not only that, but you can actually replicate something very, very, very similar, probably within like a 90 percentile, just using the base kind of UI that Blizzard offers. So what I like to do is I just move everything to the bottom of my screen. I lower the alpha a little bit, and then you can enable as many bars as you need. I have more bars than what's being shown, but they're hidden permanently because I know, uh, well, I know the cooldowns of them or they're being tracked in my kind of center resource hub. So there's no reason for me to actually have them showing at all. Now in the lower kind of right hand corner, you're going to see details and you're also going to see kind of like a spell, uh, kind of a spell tracker. It's just showing you what abilities I'm hitting and in what order. And this is mostly so people can, you know, people who are watching me stream or watching my keys or when I'm reviewing my own footage, I can see if I messed up my rotation anywhere. I can see if I executed a rotation properly during a specific point in the key. The details meters, of course, is just uh, details. Any kind of like combat log uh, in game. I know people sometimes use recounts. What was the other one that was super old? Scada, I think. Uh, but details has become quite universal and it also allows me to like uh, you can you can look at breakdowns of each pull at the end of the run. You can see overalls. This is just a kind of a base add-on that I think a lot of people use, but some people ask me about it. But the kind of the spell sequence, the uh, spell tracker, that is part of, it's actually a plugin that comes with details when you download it. You just have to enable the action tracker in the plugin section of the weak aura. I keep saying weak aura of the add-on. Now, up in the right-hand corner, you're going to see my mini-map. It's going to look a lot different than the normal in-game mini-map. I'm using an add-on called Sexy Map. I really like this add-on. I've been using it for years. I have it set to a very default, like, basic square. I just like how clean it looks. It's small. It's up in the corner of my screen. It's out of the way. It's never going to interfere. But it's there if I need it. The only time I really look at it is if I'm, like, traveling in the world. And the only time in a, in a, in a key where I'm actually using... This mini map is like in Theater of Pain when I'm trying to orient myself when going down from the first boss. Outside of that, that's pretty much my entire UI. So now that we're on a boss, I want to talk about some of the weak ores that I'm currently using. So in the lower left hand corner, I have my key kind of timer and breakdown and splits. This is just a weak aura. Again, it's going to be a I'll leave the Google document for it down below. I have a Google Doc where I put all my base weak auras in that I've just gotten from Wago. These are not mine. I did not make them. I might have tweaked them a bit, but the timer I haven't, and it's just going to be down below. It's going to be available on Wago as well, so you can always go check that out there. You're going to see the ability timeline that's going down the right-hand side of my character right now. It's basically the boss mechanics and the timing that they're coming in. So right now we have Divine Judgment coming in like four seconds. This is called a Raid Ability Timeline. This is a weak aura. It's publicly available. It is, it operates off of Little Wigs, but I personally use uh, DBM, Dungeon Boss Mods. And there is a additional add-on you need on top of that, which is DBM Dungeons. So if you download that and get this weak aura, it has this kind of timeline of abilities that are coming and when they're coming. And this helps you obviously plan uh, movement, it helps you plan defensives, and you can see what abilities are coming when. Now I've tweaked it a little bit. I've like made the bar slimmer because I think it's, it used to be a box around the icons, but I didn't like how kind of clunky it, it looked. So I wanted to thin the bar that the icons are on. Now you're going to see this thing that says group damage. Sometimes it'll say defensive. Sometimes it, right now it's saying dodge spear. This is a weak aura package that I've personally set up myself. What I do is I, when I'm testing PTR, I go through and I look at all the spells. I find their spell IDs, and if I feel like I need a reminder for certain things, what I'll do is I'll make a text weak aura in game, which is very, very easy to do. I think almost anyone could do it. If you're if you're a weak aura user, you should know how to make a, a basic text add-on. But all I'm doing is I'm linking that spell ID to that mob. So when I when I'm in combat in this dungeon with that mob and it casts that set ability. It's going to basically say defensive or group damage or dodge spear or swirls. And I've set this up. Now, this not it's not publicly available. It is available to Patreon and Twitch supporters. So if you really like it and you're feeling a little lazy, 
You can always support me on either of those two platforms and get access to that. And it also includes access to my tank weak auras. So these are basically these kind of center HUD weak aura setups that I have. You can see on my brewmaster here, it's tracking all my offensive abilities. It's tracking a lot of my defenses, my trinkets, and some of my, what I would deem important buffs to play brewmaster. And I have them for all six tanks. Those are the only two that I really have behind uh, Twitch and Patreon. They take me a long time to set up. I do a lot of research that goes into kind of making them every season or updating them every season. So that's why they are behind that. And that's pretty much it. That is my entire UI breakdown. I don't use a lot. I use, you know, shadow frame, shadow unit frames. I use Omni CD. I use weak ores and I use bartender, but bartender isn't, is like more or less optional because you can definitely do it with the in-game base UI now. And of course, things like details and et cetera. I hope that answers all of your questions. Like I said, I'm going to try to leave as much links as I can down in the description below. I'll also leave the Google sheet that I have that has all like the base week auras. If you're interested in supporting my channel through Patreon or Twitch, you'll have access to the additional week auras that I talked about. But uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions beyond that. I think I tried to cover everything here. If you want like a full breakdown on how to set up like a week aura yourself, or you want a breakdown on how like a deep dive into Omni CD or any of these other add-ons, let me know. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.